Hi, my name is Mary, and I am a huge fan of Mass Effect. I don't know how you heard about the Mass Effect trilogy. Maybe you remember all the fuss that was made about Mass Effect 3, first the hype for its release, and then the, uh, controversy over its ending? Or maybe you're a Dragon Age fan, and that series' last DLC was released, like, six years ago, so you're looking for another story-driven Bioware game to tide you over while you wait for news in the meantime? Maybe the impending release of the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, aka the Mass Effect Trilogy Remaster, has caught your attention. Maybe this video is the first you've heard of it. Regardless, you find yourself a little bit intimidated at the thought of embarking on a journey that will take up to hundreds of hours to complete. Fair enough, that totally makes sense. I came to the party late on a lot of video games and I am well familiar with the archive panic that comes with that kind of thing. So don't worry, I'm here to help you out. First things first, these videos are not meant to be a walkthrough or a list of combat mechanic tips or anything like that. I have never claimed to be a skilled gamer, let alone a master of shooters or even RPGs. There are plenty of excellent tips and tricks out there, and if you need help with leveling up your character and getting through a particularly tough boss battle, there are places that are better than me to go to. Mass Effect, as well as being a shooter, is also a story-driven role-playing game, and that's always what's appealed to me. If that's what appeals to you, then in these first two videos I'm going to help you take on the first game in manageable chunks while also getting the most out of your Mass Effect experience. I'm going to do that with a guide to character creation in this video, then general advice and a recommended mission order in the next video, all with a focus on role-playing and as spoiler-free as possible. This is all based on the original trilogy, as the Legendary Edition isn't out yet at time of recording, so I haven't had a chance to see how that's changed things up, but since we're not going to really delve into the combat mechanics too much, most of what I say should hold true regardless of which version of the game you play. Disclaimer, I am a firm believer that you should play games in whatever way is most fun for you, so this is not meant to be a definitive game for how to play Mass Effect right. The main intended audience for this video is people who are new to story-driven games, or role-playing games, or even video games in general, and just need a gentle nudge in the right direction. But I hope you can get something out of it if you're a more experienced gamer too. Before I get into advice, let me pitch the game to you. Part 1. What is the Mass Effect Trilogy? The Mass Effect Trilogy is a series of three video games by the video game company Bioware that follows one overarching story. If you're a Bioware fan, it follows the formula of the company's other games pretty well. The morality system is less like Dragon Age's companion approval system and more like Knights of the Old Republic's light side dark side scale. If none of those words I said made any sense to you, then you probably haven't played a Bioware game before. If it did make sense, feel free to skip ahead. Bioware makes role-playing games, or RPGs, that are primarily known for being driven by story and character with difficult choices that you, the player, will have to make. The outcome of these choices have varying impacts on the status of the game's world and its characters. There is often not a clear right answer, and you are forced to think more complexly about issues of grey and grey morality and sacrifice. In these games, who the player character is is largely decided by you. You choose your gender, your given name, and your appearance. In many of their games, you also have a selection of backstories to choose from. In games like Dragon Age Origins, Dragon Age Inquisition, Star Wars The Old Republic, not to be mistaken for Knights of the Old Republic, you can also choose your species. The selections will affect the way some of the other characters treat you. Speaking of other characters, Bioware is also well known for its cast of complex secondary characters that are your character's companions. You take this team with you on missions and quests, and they can be anything from enemies to reluctant allies to friends, to best friends, to even lovers, depending on how you interact with them. These dynamic relationships are one of my favorite things about Bioware games. Mass Effect is a space opera, closer in spirit to the various Star Trek TV series, or Ursula K. Le Guin or Isaac Asimov books, but with plenty of Star Warsian action in between those story beats. It's a trilogy, and though there is a fourth game taking place in the same universe called Mass Effect Andromeda, the story of this series is completed with Mass Effect 3. You play as Commander Shepard, first name, gender, and appearance all decided by you, a member of the Human Space Military, the Systems Alliance. The Alliance is the representative group for humanity in a larger galactic community with many intelligent spacefaring alien life. You start the series as Captain Anderson's executive officer on the brand new ship, the SSB Normandy, but your ship's disastrous shakedown cruise reveals a plot that threatens all of humanity, possibly the whole galaxy, and only you can stop it. It's amazing. 
I love these games because of the compelling story, the fun plot twists, difficult choices, hilarious moments coupled with devastating heartbreak, and the delightful and complex cast of characters, including lots of badass ladies. If you play as a woman, you get, in my opinion, one of the best female protagonists in any media ever, and indeed one of my favorite characters of all time. Interested? Then let's get started! You picked up a copy of the series, loaded up the first game, and selected Create a New Career. Now what? The character you create now is going to be your protagonist for all three games, so what you do with them now is worth some careful consideration. Part 2. Character Creation. Gender. Shepard, the character you play as can be a male or a female, it's up to you. I recommend playing as female, but that's just a personal decision because I feel like if you want to do a sci-fi protagonist, there's already a lot of options out there. I also adore Jennifer Hale's voice performance as Commander Shepard, but in fairness, I haven't ever done a complete playthrough with the male Shepard, so I can't offer an informed opinion on Mark Shepard's performance. I do like him in other stuff, though. Jennifer Hale is great at deadpan snark, pointed threats in barely contained rage, and also really nicely transitions into some of Shepard's more vulnerable moments, allowing nuance in her character that complements rather than detracts from what a total badass Shepard is. My understanding from others is that Mark Muir's performance is pretty stoic throughout, which isn't my personal jam, but might be what you prefer. Like I said, the only wrong choice in how you play are the choices that make the game less enjoyable for you. Personal opinions aside, there are some other considerations when deciding your protagonist's gender. There will be subtle differences in the way you're treated as a man or a woman. The biggest difference is who you can romance. I mentioned earlier that the way you interact with characters shapes your relationships with them. This includes the ability to start a romantic relationship with some of them. The first two games are pretty exclusively heterosexual, especially when playing as a dude. This thankfully changes by the third game, but in the first game there's only one human woman that you can romance as a male shepherd but not a female shepherd, one human man that you can romance as a female shepherd but not a male shepherd, and one female presenting alien that you can romance as either a male or female shepherd. In the next game you can only fully romance characters of a different gender than your shepherd. By Mass Effect 3 though, Bioware has acknowledged the existence of gay and bisexual people, and both are present on your ship. Part 3! Character creation, name, and appearance. Do what you want here. Unlike other Bioware games, you have to know what your name's gonna be up front before you decide on your character's appearance, so come in with a name picked out. You can also just stick with the default names, John Shepard for Male Shepard and Jane Shepard for Female Shepard. There are a lot of appearance options in the character creator and reportedly even more in the Legendary Edition, so have fun. I warn you though, make sure to check out your Shepard's appearance from all angles before you accept it. I can't speak for the Legendary Edition's new and improved character creator, God, I'm so excited to try it. <sighs> but in the original version of the game, cheekbones tend to come out quite sharp and I would avoid most of the makeup choices. Once you settle on your character's appearance, you're stuck with it. Unlike some of the Dragon Age games, there's no Black Emporium type place where you can alter your appearance once the game is started, so it's worth taking your time getting it right the first time. Part 4. Character Creation Background this is another one of the pre-game choices that'll subtly affect character interactions in-game. The first three are about your life before the Alliance, and the next three are about your life after joining the Alliance, but before the events of the game. If you're really into the role-playing aspect, like I am, then these backgrounds can help you shape the sort of person your character is in your mind, and then you can base your decisions on that. It also helps if you're someone who's prone to guilt to base your decisions on who you've decided your shepherd is, because then you can shift blame off yourself and onto the character like, wow, Shepard really messed that one up, huh? What a bad call. <coughs> Tragic. Your pre-aligned service history choices are Earther, Colonist, or Spacer. As an Earthborn, you were an orphan who grew up in gangs on Earth. As a colonist, you were raised on Mindwar, a human colony. When you were a teenager, most of your friends and family were either killed or taken by aliens known as Batarians. As a spacer, you were raised on a series of spaceships and stations by your Alliance military parents. All three of these choices have small exclusive dialogue options and scenes specific to their backgrounds. The Earthborn scene is fun and a little tense, the colonist scene is very moving, and the spacer scene, as the only background that doesn't cast Shepard as an orphan, is the only chance you have to meet any of Shepard's family. Albeit briefly. Your service history backstory are Soul Survivor, Ruthless, and War Hero. In the Soul Survivor background, your unit of about 50 people was attacked by a giant poisonous space worm known as a Thresher Maw, and you were the only one to make it out alive. If you chose Ruthless, you pursued a group of Batarians in retaliation for the attack on a human colony called Elysium. While you avenged the Elysium attack, 
known as the Skillian Blitz, you did so at the cost of many lives from your unit and showed no mercy to the Batarians, earning yourself the name the Butcher of Torfin. The war hero background has you involved directly in the Skillian Blitz instead of just avenging it. If you choose this backstory, then you single-handedly rallied your unit and civilians to fend off an attack of Batarian slavers who interrupted your shore leave. Your leadership bought enough time for Alliance reinforcements to arrive and save everyone on Elysium. You get a few unique lines of dialogue with each history. Though there are no unique scenes for these backgrounds, one of three side missions can have a personal bent to it, depending on which background you chose. You can get all three missions regardless, but which one has the personal component to it depends on your history. Part 5. Character Creation, Renegade, and Paragon While choosing your background, you may notice that some give you bonuses to your Paragon or Renegade starting scores. Buddy, you have just stumbled on the morality system that is used by this series and one of its more famous mechanics. As you make decisions throughout the game, some as simple as being polite or dismissive during a conversation, some as big as deciding whether or not to kill someone or let them go, you will gain renegade or paragon points. I'll explain this more in my next video, but it's good to have an idea of which way you might lean while creating your character, at least when it comes to choosing your background. Paragons tend towards talking their way out of situations, trying to find a peaceful solution to a problem before shooting their way out. Renegades shoot first and ask questions later, and are about solving problems through ruthless efficiency, consequences be damned. There are pros and cons to each way of playing, and you can play as a mix of both. Part 6. Character Creation Class this one depends entirely on you and your playstyle. In this universe, some people have abilities called biotics. It's basically the force, but shiny and blue. The classes are all a mix of biotic, combat, and tech. If you're biotic, you can mess up enemies with your shiny mind powers. Combat focuses on weapons training, with abilities that focus more on making your weapons and your body more effective. Tech powers give you more control over anything with technology, like summoning attack drones or hacking enemy AI. As a soldier class, you have purely combat abilities, so fighting gameplay will focus mostly on shooting. As an adept, you have purely biotic abilities, and you'll probably barely touch your guns in favor of using your powers. Similarly, as an engineer, your class is solely tech-based, so you'll prioritize tech powers over weapons, much like an adept prioritizes biotics. The rest of the classes are combinations of two of these three specializations. Vanguards are a mix of combat and biotics, infiltrators are combat and tech, and sentinels are biotics and tech. Mass Effect is a third-person shooter. If you're not so great at aiming, my favorite classes to play as are Vanguard and Adept. Vanguards are very in-your-face, charging into battle, and in the first two games you'll primarily use a shotgun. If you want to smash your way through combat, barely using any cover, staying on the move and taking hits like a champ, then Vanguard is the class for you. If that's not your playstyle, but you're still hesitant about your aiming capabilities, try playing as an Adept. You'll be a bit of a glass cannon, very squishy, but very powerful. As long as you stay out of enemy fire as much as possible, you'll be free to do tons of damage with your biotics. Adepts have little need to aim because they're too busy using their space magic to fire any guns. If you enjoy hanging back and sniping your enemies, then play as an infiltrator, another of my favorites. You can also be a sniper as a soldier, but infiltrator's tech powers are really useful, especially in the future games. If you like charging in guns ablazing, the old spray and pray technique, then you might like soldier. It allows you to train in and level up all types of guns and is the only class, at least in the original edition, that lets you wear heavy armor. Soldier is the default class, but I will admit that I missed the cool powers of the other classes and the strategy that comes with them, so with my soldier run, combat felt a touch on the boring side to me throughout the whole trilogy, but that said, if straight shooters are your jam, you will probably completely disagree with me, and that's totally fair. <laughs> I'm admittedly less familiar with Sentinels and Engineers. My understanding is that Sentinels are a good support class, with their biotic and tech abilities focused mostly on keeping you and your squad alive through protective or first aid abilities. Engineers are a mix of support and damage, with a little more emphasis on the former. They can administer crowd control, boost shields, and provide medical assistance, all with their purely tech abilities. Neither class is particularly focused on weapons, so either might be a good choice for someone less experienced with shooters, for the same reasons as the Adept especially if you're not so into the chaotic, in-your-face style of play that's good for a vanguard. It's also my opinion, shared by many, that the combat in the original version of the first Mass Effect is... not... great? I've never bothered with a playthrough on a difficulty higher than casual, the lowest difficulty, because the combat just 
isn't engaging enough for me to want to do much more than race through it as quickly as possible. There are a lot of cool ideas, don't get me wrong, I'm just not a fan of the execution. The combat AIs for both your allies and your enemies are really foolish, and the difficulty scaling is kind of off, making some of the early boss battles frustratingly difficult, while leaving some of the game's later climactic battles really easy. You are playing this game for the extensive world building, characters, and story, not the combat. Great news is, if you're playing this game for the first time because of the Legendary Edition release, Bioware has apparently put a ton of work into smoothing out some of those kinks and improving the UI for the remaster, so I can't wait to try that out. <laughs> Fortunately, regardless of whether or not the Legendary Edition significantly improves the combat for the first Mass Effect, I can tell you for sure that the original version of Mass Effect 2 is a huge improvement over the original Mass Effect when it comes to combat, and by Mass Effect 3, I found myself thoroughly enjoying the combat for its own sake. Like, enough that sometimes I play the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer even if it's just me by myself? I never said I was good, seriously cannot overemphasize that. So there you are, you have a shepherd! In my next video I'll cover more general advice and lightly suggest a mission order, but right now you have what you need to get started. Thanks for watching, look out for part two of this series, and uh, in the meantime, I should go. I should go.